The Dartmouth-Hitchcock Heart and Vascular Center provides state-of-the-art services in clinical cardiology, advancing frontiers of knowledge in cardiovascular medicine, and training the next generation of heart and vascular experts. February is Heart Month, and Dartmouth-Hitchcock wants you to know about your heart health. This is the fourth in a series of podcasts called Get Heart Smart. Dr. Tim Beaver, Associate Director of the Echocardiography Laboratory and Assistant Professor at Dartmouth's Geisel School of Medicine, is here with us today to discuss athletes and heart health. Dr. Beaver, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You have a special interest in sports cardiology. Tell us more about that. Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, there's been a huge explosion over the last 15 years in the United States in um, participation in athletics among our youth all the way up through um, adults into their later years. And this participation um, puts people at risk. So whether it be assessing patients prior to participation to screen them or um, assessing people that are having symptoms when they're participating in athletics, it's important to have a cardiologist on board to help assess their cardiac risk. What are some potential symptoms that an athlete could have that would alert them to see a specialist? So from a symptomatic standpoint, the important symptoms usually are having any symptoms of fainting, feeling lightheaded, um, or seizure or convulsion type activity during physical activity, um, having chest pains when they're at rest or especially when they're exerting themselves during their activity, feeling their heartbeat rapidly or regularly during their, their physical exertion, or immediately thereafter, or extreme fatigue or tiring more quickly than their peers would uh, is an important aspect of that. And then noticing not being able to keep up with friends that they're doing the athletics with or getting extremely short of breath during their activity. Can you share some heart healthy tips in relation to athletes? So from an athlete standpoint, I, I think that they're already in the right direction. There's been a huge dichotomy in the United States where we have an obesity problem and there has been a lot of press about that. On the other side of that, the reason we have a huge participation in athletics is the medical world itself has been a big promoter of physical activity and exercise. And some of our patients and and um, people in the general population have took that to an extreme and they're really participating in athletics at young ages but also into their later years. And so there, a lot of those people are doing the right things. I think the important things to keep in mind is that exercise does not obviate other things in your life. So exercise doesn't fix your bad diet. It doesn't fix your lungs if you smoke. So other things from that standpoint um, that it doesn't make things better just because you do, you participate in athletics or you exercise. Explain what the average person who exercises on a regular basis needs to pay attention to. That's a great question. You know, the same symptoms apply. So from a cardiac standpoint concerning symptoms which we talked about before, the chest pain, the shortness of breath, feeling lightheaded, feeling your heart race, are the same symptoms in, an, in a regular person who exercises as opposed to participates in high-level athletics would pay attention to, to cue them to talk to their doctor. Can you describe the benefits of a regular exercise routine while people are younger and continue into their senior years? Compare heart health to someone that has had this established routine to someone that hasn't. Sure. So let's just start with some of the benefits. We know of exercise, everybody, because we tout it um, in the media quite a bit, we know that the general recommendation is for people to get somewhere around 150 minutes of exercise per week. Um, that's you know generally recommended as 30 minutes five times per week. Um, what does exercise do for you? It does a lot of things. It helps control your weight. Um, in doing that, it, it goes a long way towards combating health conditions such as high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol, sleep apnea, other things that higher weight individuals are at risk for. Um, the other just benefits that it does is it improves your overall mood. Um, it's been shown neurologically to Im improve the plasticity of your brain and uh, boost energy as well. Um, when people exercise, they generally tend to sleep better, which makes all of that um, better as well. So I think if you look at people um, that have an established exercise routine versus people that don't, um, Generally, if you look at a sedentary individual, someone who doesn't exercise, someone who's more of a weekend warrior versus someone who exercises regularly, 
the risk goes up the less um, active you are. So um, someone that exercises is great, but if they're sort of a weekend warrior, they're putting their body under a shock at those times, and that puts them at higher risk, whereas if they exercise on a more regular basis, then their body's not quite as shocked to it. That's why the recommendation has been for people to exercise more 30 minutes over a week span as opposed to trying to cram all of that into a weekend. Are there any new screening processes that have been developed to help identify heart issues in athletes? So what standard is that the American Heart Association recommends a 14-point uh, history and physical, actually, which pretty much all athletes get, no matter what age, to ask about symptoms and family history of sudden death and other concerning things. Um, there are select populations, say, within colleges, and not every college does this, where they get EKG screening as well. And those are really being done in a situation where the quality control can be done. So we do that at Dartmouth, but it's overseen by me, a sports cardiologist, who understands the criteria for normal and abnormal in athletes, and that's very important to understand when you're doing screening. What other information should we be aware of today in regards to sports cardiology? I think the important things that are going to happen over the next 10 years are looking at exercise in, in extreme and deciding how much is too much. I think there's some preliminary studies coming out that are showing that um, ultra-endurance athletes may be putting themselves at more risk than they realize. That's one thing. Another thing is one big explosion that's happening from a technological standpoint is biometric data. Um, people looking with all these smartphones and the devices and their, their Apple watches, um, being able to record their heartbeat, being able to follow all of their biometric data over time, and physicians and sports cardiologists using that to help better evaluate them. Dr. Beaver, thank you so much for joining us today and providing heart-healthy tips and information on sports cardiology. Thank you very much. For more information or to attend a Get Heart Smart event in your area, please visit d-h.org slash heartsmart. Thanks for listening.